Yeah, yes, people have found fossils which look like they um, you know, may have some connection with humans or more likely have some connection with apes and chimpanzees. Well, these were all put in textbooks and said, here's proof that evolution is true through the human fossil record. Within 50 years or less, all of these have been debunked. And even secular scientists, secular paleontologists agree that these are just not credible fossil records of a transition from some ape-like creature to a human being. Um, Piltdown Man, for example, it's proven to be a hoax. Some guy who really wanted to be famous, he put together a, a human jaw and, and an ape head and made it look like they were one and said, well, that's that transition between an ape-like creature and a, uh, uh, and a human, and it's not. Nebraska Man, you should see some of the pictures of that. It was based on an artist's conception of, um, uh, of uh, the, the tooth of an extinct pig. And then lastly, Lucy, which is, was the, supposedly the best evidence for a fossil um, at all, is just not valid. And here basically is the reason why. Discovered in 1974, <clears throat> supposedly three and a half million years ago, the evidence based on the arm-leg ratio, you know, the, the apes, they have long arms, and so the ratio of their arm length to their leg length is different from a, a human. And so they found a skeleton here, uh, which is said that ratio is somewhere in between what it is for an ape-like creature and a human. And therefore, it's probably a, a transitional fossil. However, they did not take into consideration three other observations that the fingers are long and curved, which is ideal for climbing, which you'd expect apes and chimpanzees have. Shoulder blade looks like that of a gorilla. Uh, the brain size of a chimpanzee. They didn't take that into consideration. Checking the facts further, we find, well, the leg bone in that skeleton was actually broken in two places. Therefore, the ratio they came up with is not valid. So it can't be used as evidence of... of uh, evolution of this ape-like creature. The hip pelvis was incomplete and reshaped to make it look as if it walked upright. The knee joint was found over one mile away and 200 feet deeper in the uh, layers of rock than uh, the, the rest of the skeleton. So this wasn't even the skeleton, the complete skeleton of one um, living organism. So the fossil remains of two different creatures fitted to form a make-belief creatures. So it was starting with this 40% skeleton. How did they reconstruct it? Well, they, there was a movie put together and shown on PBS which showed how they did it. And um, they put this in a museum, the St. Louis Museum. Notice that this character on the right has a lot of hair. How do they know how much hair that had? Because fossils don't preserve hair. All they can do is guess. So an artist said, well, if it's a transitional fossil between um, an ape-like creature, which has a lot of hair, and a human, which most of us don't have a lot of hair, then I must have something in between. And so that's what uh, it shows there. Uh, the pelvis, they fixed that by some uh, magic. And, uh, you know, power saw, which I, I won't show here, but uh, th they showed how they doctored the pelvis to make it look like it could have walked upright. So... It turns out it's a make-believe creature. It's not a valid transitional fossil at all. Notice that the, the pensive look in that ape face. How would they know what he looked like back then? That's just an artist's conception. It's not real. Uh, even Lord Zuckerman, who believes in evolution, had this to say. Um, said, how can that be without leaving any fossil traces of the steps of the transformation? You know, all we got is this so-called Lucy uh, fossil, which isn't even real, and every other specimen, you know, just doesn't show this transition at all. Um, two other uh, scientists who are, again, these are evolutionists speaking. And these are honest evolutionists. Says the, uh, Watson says, the fossils that decorate our family tree are so scarce that there are still more scientists than specimens the remarkable fact is that all the physical evidence we have for human evolution can still be placed with room to spare 
inside a single coffin. In other words, they're saying, we, we really don't have the evidence. And uh, St Stephen Gould, a well-known evolutionist again, uh, said there's a glaring deficiency in the whole story. We just don't have the evidence.